Let me just. <clears throat> hey, we are about to begin. Let me just uh, test the sound really quick. So if you can hear me, just raise your hand or type yes in the chat box. Okay, good afternoon and thank you for participating in this webinar for Real-Time Early Access to Literacy, which is a program funded by the Education Stabilization Fund Rethink Education Models or ESF REM grant. The purpose of this grant is to provide an overview of the real program and to give additional information about school systems role in implementation and additional information about the tutoring service provider's role as well. So by looking at the agenda, we'll first discuss the current landscape of early literacy, a real program overview, the school system's role in implementation, our tutoring service provider's role in implementation, and then we'll be able to answer any questions that you may have about the program. So before we begin, my name is Leslie Roy. I am the Leslie Doyle. I am the Early Childhood Strategy Chief of Staff and Director of Early Childhood Academics. And I have Katasha Edwards, who's on my team, who is serving as the point person and project manager from the Real Grant. So she'll be taking over some of these slides in just a bit. So a look at the current landscape of early literacy. The need to prioritize early literacy is significant. Early literacy we know is a critical predictor of education and of lifelong success. There have been several studies that have shown this. For example, a long-term study found that students who were not proficient in reading by the end of third grade were four times more likely to drop out of high school than proficient readers. In fact, 88% of students who failed to earn a high school diploma were also struggling readers in third grade. Several other studies show that only one in 10 students who are behind in reading at the end of first grade will catch up to their peers later on. And we all know that the coronavirus pandemic has exacerbated existing gaps in early literacy. And we will be seeing this in years to come probably as well. Recently, we published our 2020 reading report. So you can see data from our current reading report shows that 40.4% of kindergarten students scored on or above benchmark on the literacy screener at the start of the year, with only 42.3% of first graders, 48.4% of second graders, and 49.5% of third graders scoring at this same level. I know that Dr. Brumley has emphasized many times that early literacy is one of our strong priorities. So it's very important that we make sure that we are providing enough support to catch our young readers up for any time that they may have lost and to support them along the way. Students lost months 
of instruction due to COVID-19 school closures, forcing our educators to prepare for students entering the fall much farther behind than they would in a typical year. Louisiana, Louisiana already has huge digital divides with nearly one third of their students who do not have access to a device at home with large disparities for students of color and students from low-income communities. And families lack access to quality remote learning resources for young children, especially for early literacy. Parents need to be able to understand and be able to support students in remote learning for students to be able to succeed. So parents also need to understand what are those tricks and what are the strategies that we use to support our children to increase their literacy levels. So let's look at a quick overview of the REAL program. REAL time for early literacy supports students from pre-K through third grade. So through REAL, school systems are allocated funding to provide students in pre-K through third grade with technology and tutoring services. The REAL program is funded by a federal grant that the Department of Education received in July of 2020, and it's called the Education Stabilization Fund Rethinking Education Models. So like I said earlier, the ESF REM grant, which opened in response to the coronavirus pandemic. The focus of this grant was to support young learners through their remote learning. Yes, we will provide a recording of these slides as well as a link to the presentation deck after the webinar. So through the REAL program, um, the department will create the REAL family portal where families can create a profile, apply for a micro grant, and enroll in live tutoring sessions for pre-K through grade three students. The department will approve tutoring service providers who will partner with families and schools to provide tutoring aligned to high quality literacy curriculum. And we will support economically disadvantaged families to access resources and services and provide families with choices that meet their individual needs. In year one, so earlier this year, Louisiana provided devices and internet connectivity to over 7,000 economically disadvantaged students in grades pre-K through three. So systems in need for, for devices for these grades were identified through the Strong Start Implementation Survey. Through the initial technology purchase, Louisiana achieved a one-to-one -one device ratio for pre-K through grade three in 90% of school systems across the state. Systems may request additional funding for technology for the 21-22 school year through SuperApp. So we used that Strong Start Implementation Survey to identify what purchases were made for this initial technology purchase, and then we will be using um, additional data along with requests sent for SuperApp for the following years. In addition to the initial technology purchases that were made, the department allocated a total of $1.6 million to school systems in December of 2020 for tutoring services. The REAL program provided funding to school systems based on the number of children in pre-K to grade three enrolled in CIR and UIRA schools. So these current allocations should be used and reimbursements can be made in EGMS up until June 30th of 2021, so the end of our state fiscal year. So for in Super App through core academics, question 6.1 aligns with the real program. The information provided along with additional considerations will be used to determine year two and year three funding. So school systems will or asked to identify the number of pre-K through third grade students at CIR UIRA schools who are in need of targeted early literacy support, including support required to effectively engage in remote learning. School systems will enter a number to identify how many students will benefit from the individual, individualized literacy tutoring, student devices, 
needed to reach a one-to-one -one ratio and internet connectivity for grades pre-K through three. Note that school systems do not have to request a, spe a specific amount of funding, but that funding will be allocated based on the numbers that you provide through SuperApp. And before Katasha takes it over, I'm gonna pause right here and see if um, there are any qu questions in the chat. Okay, I see a few people that raised their hands. Um, if you have a question, you can unmute yourself. Hello, I've just unmuted myself. My name is Gilbert Brown. Okay, what's your question? I know that this Zoom meeting is geared towards the school system as far as the request for application for this project for the community. However, if a nonprofit organization is interested in providing the same services, is that welcome as well? Um, yes, so this, the purpose of this webinar was to provide additional information for our school systems, but our RFA for, to become a tutoring service provider was open up to any organization. Thank you very much. Okay. Are there any additional questions? I see a couple more hands that are still raised. If your hand is raised, you can go ahead and unmute your mic or type your question in the chat box, either would work. Okay, then um, we're just going to go on. So I, oh, I sorry, I, I'm starting to type my question <laughs> in the chat. I apologize. No worries. Um, so if we are not going to be a site that hosts the tutoring on our campus, will students be assigned to another location that's close? Or, and will the services be in person versus virtual? I'm not understanding those pieces. Great, that's a, a great question. So um, yes, though tutoring service providers have the option for how they would like to offer their tutoring. So some of the, some of the tutoring will be offered virtually. Some have, have selected to provide in-person tutoring and some are doing whichever the family would prefer or a hybrid of the two. Um, and your first question was? It was, would LDOE um, provide the local services to us and assign us, you know, so that we, we ensure that the money that's allocated goes to the right uh, service, tutoring place, I guess, per se. Okay, and I think it might, I think what Katasha is about to present on will probably um, give additional information for you to be able to answer to answer this question. And if it doesn't, then we can circle back up with it after the whole presentation. Um, I have another question. Leslie. Yes. I think I will absolutely answer that question in the next section. Perfect. I do have a question in the chat about where did you say we accessed the December allocation? So December allocations have been added into EGMS and um, I, that also will be provided in the follow-up section. So with that, I will um, give it up to you, Katasha, so you can lead the rest of it. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Leslie said before, I'm Katasha Edwards, and I am the program manager for The Real Program. So we're going to move into a section and talk about the school system role in implementation of this program. So we're going to discuss the what, the when, and the how of how all of this is going to take place. So if you'll give me the next slide, Leslie. 
So the real program will support school systems early literacy strategies and strengthen family partnerships of students in pre K through grade three. The school systems will be able to support their early literacy strategy through enrolling eligible students in individualized literacy focused tutoring services aligning to and complementing the school system's existing work with high quality curricula. The school system will be able to strengthen family partnerships through promoting services aligned to family needs and providing families with resources required to effectively engage in remote learning. So the school system implementation timeline kind of takes us through what happens, when and how. So from February 1st through the 7th, the parent information flyers will be available for school systems and it will be available for you to use as is or to make your own. We ask that school systems provide the families of eligible students. These are students um, given a priority in our CIR and UIRA schools with the registration information. February 1st to March 1st, um, as Leslie stated, the allocations have been made and uploaded into EGMS. So we ask that you go in during that period to create your application in, EG, in EGMS. February 8th through the 19th is the student enrollment process. So for the first tutoring cycle, school systems will enroll their students into the real portal with the Louisiana unique student ID based on the selection made by parents. Parents will have the opportunity to select a high quality approved tutoring vendor and they're going to return the information to the school system and the school system will enroll students in that portal. And more information will be later in this webinar. There will be a follow up webinar in Feb on February 11th to give you more information about the enrollment process into the real portal. The first tutoring cycle is March 1st to April 30th. So our vendors, uh, approved tutoring service provider vendors, they're getting set to begin these services March 1st and it will end April 30th for the first tutoring cycle. In May, the tutoring service providers will upload an invoice into the real portal and school systems will reimburse the providers based on the allocation that was already given to the school district. By June 30th, we ask that school systems submit a request in EGMS to be reimbursed. Uh, we had a question to pop, to pop into the chat. When will we be given a list of vendors available to students in our area? Um, in the presentation today, we will share the approved vendors and the approved vendor guide will be located on our real website on the LDOE and as vendors are approved, it will be updated. The, the question asks, is the timeline for this year or for next year through Super App? The Super App is for next year, but the timeline that we're discussing today is for this year, for the allocation for the December allocation that was made. How do we notify the LD that we will not pursue the funds? As, as far as being a provider or I'm not sure. The December allocation was for schools that are CI, have CIR and UIRA. These funds are available for our or CIR, UIRA school students in pre-K through third grade. So you don't necessarily as a school system have to provide them with the tutoring. However, families should be, should be made aware of the option to participate in virtual tutoring should they want to. Yes, and, and we ask school systems to help us enroll students in those services, whether they provide the service or not. So like, what are the next steps for the school systems? To maximize the benefits of the REAL program, school systems will need to define how REAL can best support school system level strategy and priorities for early literacy, 
identify a system level point person for real. And there's a Google form attached to this slide deck when you receive it, just for you to specify who the point person is for me to contact and stay in contact with throughout the process and support the approval process for family micro grants and tutoring services. Also, we ask that you recommend tutoring service providers who currently work with your system and or consider completing the RFA to become a tutoring service provider. I see, I see a, a question couple. about if the funds are not in our EGMS. Um, if you'd like to provide us after with the name of your school system, we can let you know if that if there is funding in EGMS. I know that we sent letters out to all of our school systems that did receive funding. So if you are a school system that has pre-K through third grade students that are at a CIR or UIRA school, then you should have received an allocation. Alicia, your question about the original webinar stating that parents would be able to create accounts uh, during the first tutoring cycle, um, due to the personal identifying information, parents will not be able to create accounts. So school systems will have to not create accounts, but enroll students in services for this first initial cycle. Uh, hopefully by August, we will be ready for parents to go in and sign up. And then at that point, school systems will only approve The next question was, are the school systems required to fund the program before the funds are dispersed? So school systems will be paying for services at the end of that tutoring cycle. At the end of the tutoring cycle, the tutoring service provider will send an invoice to the school system noting the number of hours and the amount um, of tutoring that was used for that cycle, for that nine week cycle. And then the, two, then the school system will then pay the invoice of the tutoring service provider. We have one new question in the chat. Um, will guidance be given as to how we determine how students are selected in these CIR UIRA schools, assuming it is students that are considered academically at risk? So you have the amount that you are given. Um, Katasha, are you going to be talking about this a little bit later on in the slides? Well, since, since the, the, the language of the grant is focused on students in need of literacy support, so there is no um, screener that will be used to identify students, but we're leaving it up to the district to identify students in CIR, URRA schools who are in need of literacy support. The first tutoring cycle will begin, I think was mentioned in the previous slide. Um, March 1st. We'll begin March 1st and will end April 30th. So that will be the first tutoring cycle. And then there will be a similar tutoring cycle for the summer months. And beginning in the fall, we will move to a fall cycle a spring cycle and a summer cycle. That's the fall of 2021. So now that we talked about the school system role, that is what you guys that we're asking support from the school systems with, but I know some people are interested in, you know, what will be required if I sign on as a tutoring service provider and how will my tutoring service provider communicate with me what will happen with that? So we're going to go through the tutor, tutoring service provider role for implementation. 
The real tutoring service providers will offer early literacy support for students in pre-K through third grade. These are for students that are eligible in our CIR and UIRA schools. The primary objectives of the real tutoring service are to support literacy development for Louisiana's youngest learners. Those are our pre-K to third grade students. Develop strong relationships with families to support learning. Align to and complement the school system's existing work with high quality curricula and implement tutoring best practices. The next slide is going to go into the tutoring service provider implementation timeline. So in the month of Fe February 1st, our tutoring service providers will sign some assurances. The 8th through the 19th, they're going to log into the real portal to view which students you guys have enrolled. The enrollment will be based on the LACID number. So at that point, the student ser tutoring service provider is going to contact the schools to retrieve student contact information. The providers will contact the families to register students for tutoring sessions. The cycle will be from March 1st to April 30th. Tutoring service providers will engage with families and school systems on student progress monthly, and they will engage by completing surveys at the beginning and end of each cycle. By May 15th, we ask that they invoice and upload a file into the real portal so that you can be begin the process of closing out for the first tutoring cycle and requesting your reimbursement in EGMS. So now that we've gone through both of those processes, your school system may be wondering how to become a tutoring service provider. So there's a link to the RFA and also a link to apply online. And if you're interested in becoming a tutoring service provider for, the, for this first tutoring, tutoring cycle, we ask that you apply by February 12th. And to review a tutoring service provider guide, it will be placed on our real website. There's a question um, in the chat. Will information be provided as it relates to the process of entering the budget and non-public equitable services? Um, private school. I'm sorry. And will 2020-21 allocation be required to be expended by June 30th? So I was saying because this grant is funded by CARES Act funding, we are required to have that equitable service information included on the EGMS application, which is why you see the tab for private school and non-public numbers. However, because this grant, our application was written with um, eligibility for CIR and UIRA students, we can, you should be putting a zero for those categories when it asks for a number that would be eligible. So there is a, a little bit more information on how to complete your EGMS, your budget within EGMS will be explained at the next meeting. So the one that's occurring on February 11th. And I did receive another question about whether or not school systems will receive additional allocations for each cycle. Um, yes, yeah, so this initial allocation was just was just for this first cycle. And then we are kind of going to get, gather additional information as the tutoring services progress, kind of understand where the need is really going to be. And we'll make follow-up additional allocations based probably on a combination of formula-based and using some of the information from school systems that use the that used these funds previously to kind of make, make a decision. Um, do school systems need to include a certain number of students per grade in pre-K through third at our CIR UIR schools? Or do school systems prioritize students according to needs? 
So are you are putting the number of eligible students. So I would put the number of pre-K through third grade students that you have enrolled in those CIR, CIR UIRA schools within EGMS and then you are providing information about creating up, um, enrolling into the program. You're providing that information to those that you see most in need of that support. This money, the money in EGMS is not lumped with the CARES Act money. It's its own separate allocation in EGMS. Um, I'm going to let Katasha go on, and if there are any additional questions that are not answered after this, then we'll follow back up. Okay, I think she may have accidentally dropped, so I'll, I'll go ahead and start answering some. Um, yes, I will provide a link for the slide deck, and... I dropped from the call for a moment. I apologize. And it is called Real in EGMS. Thank you, Dr. Angela Beck. Okay, Katasha, you can um, continue. Absolutely. Um, so um, I, I know you guys talked a little bit before we jump into the LDOE approved vendors. Um, I think the next slide is going to talk about why become a provider. So we'll discuss that in a moment, but I do want to give a shout out to St. Landry Parish School Board. They were the first school system to sign up to become a, an approved vendor. And I know there was a question when I dropped if school system had to provide services to other students other than their own. And school systems don't have to provide services for other students, but we do ask that school systems allow parents to have the choice to select the vendor. Our other approved vendors are Canopy Education, one-on-one -on -one learning, and Sylvan Learning, but the portal is open and applications are accepted on a rolling basis. So I look for some additional vendors to be approved very soon to be added to this list. Yes, currently uh, CIR and UIRA schools are the only eligible schools. There was a question in the chat. So why become a provider? Um, as we discussed earlier, um, the allocations have already been made to, directly to the school systems. So the money is actually yours. So why would you become a provider? As a real tutoring service provider, school systems can utilize the allocated funds to customize literacy tutoring and supports that align to system level strategy and goals. You'll be able to address unfinished learning and support young learners in their reading development, align tutoring services to the school system's existing work, employ district teaching staff to ensure a seamless extension of literacy instruction, and receive up to $40 per hour to provide individualized literacy tutoring to students. So your hourly compensation could include your 20 or $25, whatever your standing rate is to compensate your staff or teachers. And the additional funds could be used to purchase materials, provide professional development, administrative costs, technology purchases, et cetera. So there will be a follow-up webinar on February the 11th. During this time, school systems will receive additional support with enrolling students in the real portal. The portal build out is almost complete. And as soon as I receive the instructions, I'm going to send it out to our system contacts. So you'll have information. But if you would like to attend to just walk through the process with me, I would be happy to do that. And we'll also look into EGMS to answer any EGMS questions that you may have at that time. Okay, we do have a few questions in the chat that um, I want to make sure that we cover. So one of them was, 
Will the 2021 allocation be required to be spent by June 30th, 2021? Um, any spending that occurs before June 30th must be submitted for reimbursement before that time. But if you don't use all of the funds from that allocation, they will be, they will be collected and put in the larger pot of money and just can be used for another allocation for the next cycle. So these, this funding is for three years. So anything that's just not spent will be picked up and reallocated. Uh, the next question that I see is the LDOE providing a flyer. Yes, there is a flyer that we, will, we, we are providing for our information for families and registration that schools can use. And I'll be sure to share that with the system level contact person that responds to the Google form. And if you are on the call and you're a system level contact, you can also just email me um, at katasha.edwards at la.gov. And I can add you to make sure that you receive that flyer. Um, another question, is there a per student dollar limit? So within the RFA for applicants to become a tutoring service provider, they each tutor, each tutoring session, they could charge no more than $40. So if you're trying to figure out your budgeting, um, you can maybe use that to help $40 per hour of tutoring for a nine week cycle. And that may be help to decide exactly how many students you can use this funding source for. Yes, and when you enroll your students into the portal, there will be uh, an opportunity for you to put a dollar amount next to those students so that the provider will know how much or how many hours of services the student is eligible to receive. For example, between $250 to $500 per student inside the real portal. Now, if you are considering becoming a provider yourself, then you can look at it as you have so many hours of tutoring available. If you take your allocation and divide it by 40, then you would be able to see how many hours of services you would be able to offer and the number of students you would be able to impact during the first cycle. So it would depend on if you are becoming a provider or if you are entering an amount into the portal for other providers to provide literacy supports for your students. Another question was, do tutoring service providers have to reapply for each cycle? Um, that will not be necessary. However, there will, there will probably be contacting um, on our end. So the Department of Education will probably reach out to all of our tutoring service providers at the end of each cycle, just to ensure that you are willing to continue for the next um, tutoring cycle and to make sure none of that information that's all, that you provided for the vendor list has changed. The question is the, is this one-to-one -one ratio or can they have small groups? For the first cycle, uh, we've asked all providers to do the one-to-one -one ratio. We did discuss with um, a school system about possibly doing small groups in the summer, but for the initial cycle, it's, it's for one-to-one -one literacy tutoring. So this is great opportunity for your for school systems to take advantage of this of this program. You currently have the funds in EGMS already for tutoring, so you could offer it up to your families to choose a vendor from the guide, or you could be the one who guides the process and uses your own teachers, your own curriculum, and strategically plans what this what this program is going to look like at more of a local level. So it's just up to you about how much involved you want to get with the program. Are there any additional questions? Um, this chat, I'm sorry, this webinar will be provided on the real time early access to literacy webpage, which is listed right here. The link is right on your screen. Um, it will be posted there. And 
Let me go ahead and put that link also in the chat box. When is the budget due in EGMS? I know additional information on your EGMS budget will occur during the next webinar on February 11th. Katasha, do you have any updates on when the budget's due? That when, when you go into EGMS, there, there is a date there, but I had a discussion with the grants department. That is not a hard date. So um, we just asked that vendors that school systems completed during the month of March so that we can you know be sure that the funds will be used because unlike other funds the, the only services that can be used are for tutoring I know this was a lot of information today. I appreciate everybody for logging on. If you have specific questions, uh, if you would like to set up a Zoom call or talk by phone, please email me. And we're, we're excited about this. We're, we're excited about the opportunity to be able to utilize these funds that were provided by the United States Department of Education for our youngest learners in Louisiana. And as Leslie said before, we see it as a great opportunity for school systems to be able to utilize the funds themselves to pro provide the support for students. And we do understand that some school systems will not be able to undertake this work for the first cycle, but we do encourage you to consider it for subsequent tutoring cycles because this is a three-year grant. And in addition, our tutoring service providers, I was, uh, had an email from one today, they're eager to work with all our school systems. So I look forward to, uh, to them reaching out to you as well because they are also looking for teachers to work with them. And many of the teachers from our CIR and URRA schools to work with them to provide these services. Feel free to reach out if you want us to act as a thought partner to help you to kind of figure out how this, how this program can work best for the students in your system. Thank you guys so much.